This idea of how the royal family, how this family grapples with its history and legacy of colonialism, of slavery, of the potential paying of reparations is a really important one. And I think that King Charles understands that his job is, yes, as a monarch, but he's also an anchor for this Commonwealth. She said, uh, a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. It was a thieving, raping, genocidal um, but I think empire. We I'm lost uh, for words. Uh, Step in. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray Obliterate CNN Host for Racist Hatred. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. That absolute moron we just saw first from CNN talking about reparations. She has no idea in her own her own racist hatred. You are about to see Douglas Murray completely destroy a woke host and the mainstream media. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. CNN, MSNBC, they've all they've all decided to display not just animus against the crown and against Great Britain and the Commonwealth. They've also decided to dis display their extraordinary ignorance of history. I mean, they seem to believe that, for instance, Elizabeth II oversaw the empire. They seem to believe the British royal family made its wealth from colonialism. They seem to think that, that, that the colonial era was so terrible that the Commonwealth countries must have been strong-armed into joining the Commonwealth. They've totally ignored the fact, of course, that every Commonwealth country's leadership, quite understandably, has been expressing their mourning and grief for the loss of Elizabeth II. And why would that be if she was such a tyrannical ruler? Only because that's in the head of these very twisted, spiteful, hateful people like the New York Times. It's quite amazing to watch and very disturbing because it's a reminder, if I can say so, that you know institutions like the New York Times used to be great institutions and they've been destroyed by hatred. And that's the exact opposite of what Queen Elizabeth showed in her own lifetime, which is that you build institutions with love, with love and loyalty. Uh, and that's something that the CNN, MSNBC, and New York Times, they, they wouldn't understand the language we were speaking in there. No, and it's not just the hate. As you said, it's the historical ignorance, which is uh, astonishing, particularly when it comes from people you think <laughs> would have a grasp of history. They're academics, they're members of the media, the working media. Uh, you mentioned some of the other outlets, CNN, uh, the view on the ABC. Let's just have a look at some of these examples. You know, this idea of how the royal family, how this family grapples with its history and legacy of colonialism, of slavery, of the potential paying of reparations is a really important one. And I think that King Charles understands that his job is, yes, as a monarch, but he's also an anchor for this Commonwealth. She said, uh, a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. It was a thieving, raping, genocidal um, but I think empire. We I'm lost what for words. Uh, Step in. First of all, if the British Empire had been genocidal, the people in question wouldn't be alive. They wouldn't be speaking. If the British Empire had been a genocidal empire, it would have tried to kill all of the people under its rule. It did no such thing. There wouldn't be any people in the countries that were under British rule if the British if the British Empire had been genocidal. Genocidal is the intent to wipe out an entire people. The British Empire never tried to do that anywhere. That's the first thing. The second thing is that absolute moron we just saw first from CNN talking about reparations. She has no idea in her own her own racist hatred, that Britain paid reparations 250 years ago. We paid reparations throughout the 19th century. We paid reparations for slavery by, by abolishing it under George III and then policing the high seas to ensure that slavery not only was outlawed across the, across the British uh, territories, but was outlawed across the high seas. We paid higher goods in Britain throughout the 19th century, higher prices in goods, 
because we wouldn't deal in slaving countries such as the United States of America. And so when people talk about reparations today, it demonstrates not just their own basically give me cash mentality, which is all, all that you see here, but also the incredible ignorance. They don't know that Britain paid down any moral and financial debt it ever had 200 years ago under very distant predecessors, predecessors of Queen Elizabeth II. And these people are not just money, uh, tin rattling money makers. They're also just constantly showing their unbelievable ignorance of everything that happened before the day they were born. Douglas Murray's criticism zeroes in on the misrepresentation of the royal family's history and the misplaced calls for reparations. His argument is twofold. Firstly, he highlights the factual inaccuracies in the media's portrayal of the royal family's legacy, correcting the record by pointing out that Britain, in fact, played a pioneering role in abolishing slavery and even compensated slave owners in a bid to end the trade too. 150 years ago, a nuance often overlooked or ignored in contemporary discussions. Secondly, Murray condemns the reduction of complex historical narratives to simplistic anachronistic judgments, emphasizing the danger of judging historical figures and events through a modern moral lens. Murray's criticism of the media's portrayal of these issues points to a larger systemic problem, a widespread historical amnesia, and a tendency towards presentism, judging past actions by today's standards without considering the context of those times. This approach not only distorts history, but also impedes meaningful dialogue on current issues. Historians and scholars have continually warned against such anachronistic interpretations of history, advocating for a more nuanced understanding that acknowledges the complexities and moral ambiguities of historical events and figures. Furthermore, the backlash Murray highlights against the royal family and the demand for reparations overlooks the modern Commonwealth's role as a voluntary association of sovereign states. This relationship, based on mutual respect and shared values, stands in stark contrast to the coercive nature of colonial empires. Today's Commonwealth, encompassing nations with diverse cultural, religious, and historical backgrounds, is a testament to the evolution of these relationships from colonial rule to equal partnership. Britain's Slavery Abolition Act marked a monumental step towards ending the slave trade within the British Empire, a move that was not only moral, but also came with substantial economic costs. The British government spent a significant portion of its national budget to compensate slave owners in the colonies, freeing over 800,000 enslaved Africans across its territories. This financial undertaking amounted to 40% of the government's annual expenditure, equivalent to billions in today's currency, illustrating the enormity of Britain's commitment to eradicating slavery. The scale of this financial sacrifice is a testament to the values Murray defends. It highlights the complexity of historical narratives that are too often simplified or distorted in modern debates. Wow. By, we can all tell uh, by the facts and points Douglas stated, this st uh, incident, this story of uh, repatriation, a lot of debate have been going on, people demanding to be paid for uh, slavery. And believe me, this uh, slavery they are talking about, according to Douglas, which is stated, happened 200 years ago. And I believe there are other issues that they should be talking about, they should be thinking of how to address instead of uh, nagging on what happened 200 years ago. And believe me, just like Douglas stated, a lot of uh, repatriation have been made uh, when slavery was ended, according to uh, what we see in the video. Uh, even the British people uh, used about 40% out of their budget to be able to pay uh, repatriation. And they, 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 they lost a lot of money to do that. So someone coming today demanding for repatriation, demanding for slavery that happened 200 years ago. I don't think, I don't think that's right. And the question that we, I would like to ask is, when is enough going to be enough? When is enough going to be enough? Because every day you see different people coming to uh, talk about being paid money for slavery that happened 200 years ago. Believe me, those people even talking about repatriation, talking about slavery, talking about compensation, they never felt the pain of slavery. And yet are they demanding to be paid money, demanding, to, uh, demanding for an apology? I really feel that is uncalled for. That is really wrong. And we can all tell 
the blacks we have now never felt the pain of slavery. Same thing the whites we have now never engage in slave trade and they never own trade, they never own slaves. So why should someone pay you for the crime he never committed? Or why should someone uh, pay you for the crime he know nothing about? I feel that is totally wrong. And the repatriation they are even talking about in this video, believe me, when slavery was ended 200 years ago, down to this point, a lot of repatriation have been made, a lot of apology have been rendered, and still people kept demanding for apologies, people kept demanding for repatriation. So when is enough going to be enough? You can tell that based on the fact uh, Douglas have stated in this video, I totally align with the fact Douglas have stated, and I, I relate with the point he stated, because when is enough going to be enough? Repatriation that have been made 200 years ago, and people kept demanding for uh, repatriation, they kept demanding for uh, uh, apology. So when is enough going to be enough? That is the question we should be asking. I think it's high time we start looking for the way forward and thinking about how to address other better issues, other better problems that we are having in the world today. Instead of talking about slave trade or talking about repatriation, I feel this is not a time to be talking about our, our, our slave trade or repatriation because it has been made. So there are other better issues we should talk about how we can address those issues. So I would like to hear your comment based on the facts and the points Douglas have stated in this video. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.